asked for help. My mom was like, are you kidding me? He's never going to drive this anywhere. And I got hooked on it. And since then, it's just been like my passion. And I wanted to, my dreams to be the youngest one in the NFL. Welcome back to another episode of The Burn. I am Ben Newman, and this couldn't be any more special for me. My buddy, Elliot Cox, this is one of my youngest friends. This is also, believe it or not, you guys are going to hear an amazing story. I don't even know if I can call you a client, but one of my youngest clients, somebody who's embraced mental toughness in his life, an absolutely incredible story on the racing track and off the racing track. So a lot of times, I don't necessarily do a lot when it comes to bio, but to be as impressive as you are at 12 years old, I have to share some things. So Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing just signed Elliot as the youngest professional race car driver in the country, arguably one of the youngest professional athletes in the country, which really falls in line with your dream, which you told me years ago when we shared the stage in Indianapolis at one of our events, that he wants to be the youngest to ever win the Indy 500. Now, in addition to that, if that's not enough, you've had the Indiana State House of Representatives honor you. Like you've had the yeah. Senate honor yeah. you for Indiana. And you also, well. which I think is so incredible, your fight to raise money for dyslexia, right? I mean, you, you are a special young man, Elliot. And that fight for dyslexia, one of the things I recognize is I know you've been part of charitable events that's raised I mean, tens of thousands of dollars. But you decided you were going to do a pull-up challenge. And we're going down to my workout room later. I'm going to put you up on our, on our beam. And that pull-up challenge was the most pull-ups you do in 15 minutes. right? So I want all of you, all of you adults watching, to think, how many pull-ups do you think you could do in 15 minutes? Now, Elliot ended up doing 160. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I think that's more than I could do in a 15-minute period of time to raise over $2,500 for dyslexia. So one of the things that always impressed me about you, it, it's actually your demeanor, it's the way that you shake a hand, it's like you are one impressive little dude. And I remember that when I had the opportunity to talk to you for the first time when your father called me, who I've been friends with for over 10 years, your dad called and said, my son is a kart racer and he's one of the best in the country. I mean, you've won nine championships, you've represented Team USA, it's incredible what Elliot Cox Racing has now become. And I think to, about that conversation, your dad calls, and I was like, well, Ellie and I are really going to talk about mental toughness, <laughs> like <laughs> locking in an ideal state of focus? And Travis is like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, is Amanda okay with this? Like, are, are we good? And he's like, no, 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 just it's, we're going to have some fun with this. Mm -hmm. And I remember you were so engaged in that conversation. I mean, you were locked in. And I can tell you, here's a, here's a little secret. Don't tell anybody our secret, even though everybody's watching. In my house... The one who actually locks in my kids for sporting events is my wife, Amy. So it's not even me, right? So I still get to help a little bit. My wife's the one who's figured them out. So it was awesome for me to have that conversation with you. So here's where I want to start. When we had that conversation, and then I want you to tie that to this big dream, where does this fire and passion come from? You're doing some extraordinary things at a young age. Like, like what makes you go? Like, what's, what's that fire? Tell me about that fire inside of you. So... When I was five years old, I honestly, I've always had a knack to drive anything that had steering wheels and could drive, like, go fast. And I wanted to, first, at first I wanted to drive a dirt bike. So I was like, to my grandpa, I was like, hey, can you get me a dirt bike? And he was like, I don't know, let's see. And we went <clears throat> to a cart sale store and we found a little cart and he bought it. And my mom, we brought it home and we asked for help. My mom was like, are you kidding me? He's never going to drive this anywhere. So <clears throat> we took it to uh, the go-kart track to learn how to drive it, and I got hooked on it. And since then, it's just been, like, my passion, and I wanted to, my dreams to be the youngest winner in the Indy 500. And so let, let's speed forward, and then, and then I'm going to come back because I, I don't want to miss this part. So the Sarah Fisher Hartman racing team has got you an F4 racing car. So this, this is not a cart. This is a regular car. It goes 140 miles an hour, and that's what you're going to be driving. And in two years' time after training, you're going to be competing. I mean, you're a pro athlete now. So you're going to be competing against 16, 18, 20, 22-year-olds. Like, full out, mm -hmm. this is 
real racing. It's not go-karts. Is that accurate? Yeah. So tell me about this F4 car. So it kind of all happened really fast, but like we had dinner with Andy and Sarah one night just to talk about how we were going to get into F4s, like what route we were going to take. And then they said they were going to try to start a team for us and all the supporters and stuff just all kind of came. Um, and Wink Hartman's been helping us. Um, he's going to fund it. And <clears throat> it's just all kind of gone really fast. And we had the press conference, too, like three weeks ago. And now it's official, and it's kind of crazy. It's pretty wild. I'm super proud of you. Thank you. You know, because one thing, and I want everybody to pay attention to this, this is the hard part, right? We all have dreams, we all have goals, we all have visions. This is one of the things that really impresses me. And it's similar, actually, to my son and my daughter. Like, my son has really gotten involved in basketball, and he attacks it. I mean, he, he's constantly on the court. My daughter loves soccer. She's breaking fences in the backyard, <laughs> kicking the ball so hard, right? And so they attack it. And, you know, so oftentimes, children of your age, they don't attack what's in front of them, especially this day and age, right? Mm -hmm. Stuck on video games, not doing the little things that we need to do. So it's super impressive that, that you're doing that. Where did that work ethic come from? Um... I honestly think it came from my dad. He's always been telling me to dream big and work hard, and you can do what you think about um, from your books, too. Um, you just said that because you're with me right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just that, I don't know, the passion has just fueled me, and I want to get, work hard. I go to a personal trainer three days a week for an hour, and I swim six hours a week. Um, for my club swim team and just to stay fit and it's just taken me so far and then you've also and, and these are the things like when you think of your goals and your dreams right here's Elliot attacking all facets of it from the stuff you do off the track to raising money for dyslexia to school that you still have to go to <laughs> that you're an honor roll student and right so all of these things just attacking all of it and sometimes as adults you know what happens to us we make all these excuses why we can't do it mm -hmm. And I always talk about the unrequired. It's all the little things that if you really want to perform at a high level, you're willing to do. And you're really attacking all those things that are unrequired. Most people just do the basics. And I know another thing that's unrequired, which I think is so unique about your training, is the visual training that you do. Tell me a little bit about that. So I work with um, Aries Elite Sports Vision um, and Dr. LaPlaca. They help me with my reaction time um, so I don't drive into crashes just because. Um, <laughs> and my dynamic vision so I can see um, where people are, my multiple object tracking, so I can tell, like, if there's, like, if we're going three wide, I can tell where everybody's at and wh how it's going to go, like, turn out. And it's helped me a lot because, like, before I started with him, I would just drive into random crashes and be like, I had nowhere to go when I clearly had a route over there that I just didn't see. Incredible. So in all of the answers so far, you've mentioned your parents, you've mentioned right finding that passion with grandpa, you've mentioned a strength coach, mm -hmm. you've mentioned the doctor that's helping you on the visual side. I think you're realizing at an early age that even though you're one man in that car, right? I'm gonna call you a man, a little man. You're one man in that car that it takes a team to really accomplish a lot in life. So tell me about the importance of team and just the love and the support that you've been getting. What does that mean to you? I just, it means so much because you can't, if you have a great team surrounding you and people helping you and are, that are on your side, you can go so much further as than if you think it's all about you and you can do it all by yourself, then you're going to like, there's just gonna, it's gonna be all overwhelming and you just need all those people to help you and it'll just take you so much further. That's awesome, it's very cool. Now let's talk about something. So that first phone call we ever had, mm -hmm. so we talk about your emotional trigger, which I had shared with your dad, I said this is, you know, it's kind of a complex strategy and it's a five point strategy and those of you that have the mental toughness playbook, it's actually in there now and I gotta make sure I get, get you a, a new copy of, of the playbook since we just added it. And so in there, it goes through this five-step strategy to lock an athlete or a business professional in that ideal state of focus. And I read, I, I couldn't help, down at the bottom of your bio now, it talks about the importance of visualization before a race. Mm -hmm. So tell me about what you think about it, because I was super proud. I was, I'm not going to lie to you. I was smiling ear to ear, yeah. reading that that's helped you out so much. So tell me how important it is for you to see and to visualize that race before it actually happens. So it just helps me. I always 
when I'm in my helmet sitting before we go out on the track, I always visualize how I think it's going to happen, how I know how I know it's going to happen. And you just think about it continually. You th- um I f- think about my be- the f- best feeling I've had on the track like winning the biggest race and I just f- feel that and I that's how I'm going to feel it later on in the race and then I just think about all that and then it just kind of all goes out and happens. That's awesome. So you've you've won a lot of races, over 100 races. You've won 9 championships, one national championship. You've competed and you, you've raced for the United States. Now you're one of the youngest professional athletes in the country. I'm going to do a little visualization for you. Here's what I thought about one of the main things I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. You are going to raise a lot of money for dyslexia. Mm-hmm. You are going to help. You are going to raise millions. Like what you've already done is only scratching the surface of what God is going to give you the platform to do because of how you embrace and you show up every single day. And I think you can handle that. Thank you. Okay? I think you're going to raise millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. So tell us about dyslexia and how you overcome that challenge in your life and how much it means to you to really have become a voice at such such a young age for dyslexia. So I got diagnosed with dyslexia when I was six years old, and <clears throat> my dad has it too. He noticed that I was having some of the same issues that he had when he was my age. So we, I got diagnosed... Um, I got to meet Justin Wilson, who was dyslexic, and he was an IndyCar driver. He sat down with me and told me that um, people are going to call me stupid and dumb, but not not to let that get to me and just continue powering through it. And when he died in a crash, um, I wanted to carry on his legacy, and that's how I thought I would do it. I was going to start a charity. And since I've started it, I raised over $78,000 for dyslexia. It's incredible. Tell us the name of the charity so everybody can look it up. Driving for Dyslexia. And, and we'll make sure that we get information out in the caption, the Driving for Dyslexia, and, and just ways for everybody to stay connected with you. But here's one final question I have for you, and then I'm going to tell you something that I wanted to tell you for a long time. Okay. So if you could say anything to everybody watching, adults and kids, mm-hmm. who maybe, I like to say, people protect themselves with their dreams rather than chasing them, and you said your dad really inspired you at a young age to just go for it, Mm -hmm. okay? So what would you say to those individuals who right now, maybe they're holding back, they're not going all in, they're protecting themselves, they're not thinking big enough. What would you share with them? I just think you need to dream big, um, and you you get what you think about. So just always think about it, keep your mindset on it, and if you work hard enough toward it, you'll get to it. Well, Elliot, you, you continue to impress me, and you inspire me. Thank you. You really inspire me, buddy. It, it, it is awesome to see that three years ago we shared the stage in Indianapolis. You're the youngest speaker to ever speak at one of our <laughs> events. So he's got this tradition. He's just the youngest to do all these different things. So the youngest speaker we've ever had in an event, and you did incredible being on stage with with us that day with Stephanie White and Terry Grieg and David Gorsuch. It was just such a memorable day. But what impresses me and inspires me is that you've continued to stay the course. Mm -hmm. So stay connected to that burn that lies inside of you, right? That passion for speed. It sounds like you got that need for speed, but also that passion to make a difference. I'm super, super proud of you. And uh, I guess we can call you my youngest client, huh? Yeah, I guess so. All right, let's keep attacking, buddy. I appreciate you. Thank you.